so I chose that song. <clears throat> I chose that song because of the huh, right? So, huh. Hi, so I'm Veronica Romney. I'm probably the most excited person on the stage today. And I also had a Diet Coke, so I'm like really ramped up. Uh, I actually love Vancouver. I've been here a number of times. I skied my first double black diamond in Whistler when I was uh, in high school. So I thought I was going to die, and I didn't, and so I'm here with you today. Um, <clears throat> getting over a little bit of a cold. I knew today was going to be special. Not because it's just this conference and it's a Tuesday, because Tuesdays are fabulous days, but I also knew that it was going to be August 28th. Is anybody a history buff in the room? Likes history? Thank you, one, okay. <laughs> I love history. And on August 28th, there were some pretty significant historical events that I would like to share with you. This first one, in 1963, this handsome man, Dr. Martin Luther King, gave his iconic, probably most famous speech called, I have a dream speech. And as a mother of two children, my favorite line is, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. Chills. Yeah. Not to be outdone, what about this handsome man? In 2008, so August 28, 2008, Barack Obama officially accepted the Democratic nomination to run for U.S. president. As we know, he later wins, becomes our first uh, as my coworker would say, biracial president, I think he would classify himself as our first black president. So a lot of political historical events on August 28th, which makes it pretty great. And speaking of politics and great, just kidding, was it in 2016 so much fun? Said no one. It was awful. <laughs> This is, this is how, this is not my children, but this is how I felt. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about because the battles that were had on social media were epic. And if any of you got like that Facebook post that said, congratulations, you've survived my friend purge. Anybody see those? It was awful. People got divorced in 2016. When I Googled what ruined the 2016 presidential race, the number one answer, I'll read it to you for those in the back, was by NPR that said, did social media ruin the election 2016? Countless articles blamed social media. And it wasn't just us that was like obnoxious, let's be honest. Our politicians definitely didn't help the situation. So here's Hillary Clinton's tweet. She says, 1.2 trillion, the amount of 40 million Americans owe in student debt. Jeb Bush decides to tweet back saying, 100%, the increase in student debt under this Democratic White House. And not because, I mean, I don't know any other strong females that would just let that go. So she tweets back and says, F. <laughs> the grade uh, given to Florida for college at affordability under Jeb Bush's leadership. So then, of course, he responds, his team, I'm sure it's not him, he responds and says, hey, to, uh, Hillary, we changed, we fixed your logo for you. It's an upward arrow and it says taxes, 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 taxes. Really classy folks, right? So it wasn't just us and it definitely wasn't the politicians. Does anybody know who this guy is, by a raise of hand? I'm winning with the questions. This is Brad, uh, Brad uh, Parcell. He is the digital guru for the Trump campaign, and he did an interview with 60 Minutes, and he was pretty famous because he confided and confessed for the first time that during the election, for the first time, he had Google employees, Twitter employees, and Facebook employees in the Trump administration, in the Trump uh, campaign offices on a weekly basis teaching them the ins and the outs of all of the functionality that was provided to them on social media advertising platforms and all advertising platforms really, but specifically social media ones. And he talked and gave credit to the fact that social media got them into homes, into devices that were never ever advertised to before in a presidential campaign. These are like little silent little pockets of the country where a TV ad and a radio ad would just not make any sense. It was too expensive. 
but with social media, they could. And he contributes that to their success. They were able to draw people to the ballots that never were really there before. So you can blame him. Um, but the hype is very real, folks. <laughs> Uh, with 93% of marketers already on the social media like advertising bandwagon, it's not going anywhere. I love it, not just because I love it, but genuinely, it's not going anywhere. And some of my favorite stats I'm going to share with you, these are all very Twitter-worthy, hint, hint. Number one, 80, over 80% 80 of accounts on Instagram follow business. I do. I want a sneak peek of fall collections or any kind of promotions or discounts I can get from my favorite brands. 93% of people who follow a business on Twitter plan and have intentions of purchasing from that business they follow, which makes sense. And over 25% of Facebook users who reported clicking on an ad then went to go purchase from that ad. So they're converting. This is not necessarily just influence, but they are converting at a very high rate. And then over 80% of the U.S.'s <clears throat> B2B relationships or leads can be fostered back to relationships and connections on LinkedIn, which is crazy, right? And why? Why? The average cost per click on Facebook right now is $1.72. And those of you in the room that have done and are you know, doing ads on Google know that it's a very different story on Google. We, I have a client, <clears throat> for example, at our agency that their average cost per click on Facebook is $1.34, but their average cost per click on Google for essentially the same audience is $15.42. Big difference. So why are we not like, this is me running, why are we not running to go on social media? Why are we, why are we not participating with it? Are we intimidated? And beyond the affordability of social media, what I love most about it is that I can literally place a social media ad at every single stage of the customer journey. Every stage I can influence. Helping a person, a prospective lead, go down this funnel faster, cheaper, and with a stronger brand loyalty. Because why? Because we're not talking about text ads. We're talking about visual. What happens when you empower somebody with an image, a video, a boomerang, anything? What do I create that I can't necessarily create through a text ad? I get to tell a story. I get to create an emotion. Does that make sense? I, can get, I get people to feel. Not just appeal to their logic, but I get to make them feel because of how visual social media is. Now, this talk is about going beyond the basics, but not everybody in this room is at the same place. I just want to go through four quick fundamentals before I go through going beyond the basics. Number one, we're talking about people, not keywords. We're talking about human beings that we are targeting, demographics, personas, avatars. I don't really care how you describe it, but we're, we're talking to people through social media. Right? We're targeting their profiles. We're not talking about keywords. That's a very significant paradigm shift if you've only been used to right, the Google Ads. Most of the time, we're, creating an, like, we're influencing. We're creating a, a sphere of influence for these people. We're not always 100% concerned about the bottom line, that final click for the conversion, because most of the time, it's probably not going to happen. And I hope that's not your only measurement of success, because you might be disappointed. But we're talking about influencing, right? We're talking about brand loyalty, brand awareness. We're driving, right, this, this story. And social media is on a what? It's a mobile app. It's not the first page of Google that I went to. It's an app, an app that I, you know, catch up with my friends, my family, I'm married, but you might want to stalk your future date. I mean, like, right, we go on an app to be social. We're not necessarily there to, like, be sold to or, or bought. So what do I have to do as a marketer? Well, I have to think like the producers of The Bachelor, right? What am I doing in my ad that's enticing enough to get them to leave the app to get to my unbounced landing page? Name drop, right? That's how you have to think. How are you enticing? You know, who does Becca pick next week? Does that make sense? And lastly, <clears throat> fundamentally speaking at least, we always have to be testing. 
This talk that I gave months and months and months ago in Napa in March is not the same talk that I'm giving you today because we, even at our own agency, are evolving and changing as this platform evolves and changes. So don't get discouraged and don't get complacent. Things change all the time. So this presentation is the first time I've ever given it and the advice and assignments I'm giving you is for you and you alone. So now let's go beyond the basics. In your notebooks, give me at least five lines. Maybe more, but at least five. Number one, the power of Facebook, Instagram, that's owned by Facebook, is that it is a remarketing game first and foremost. I need you to change this idea that it's just all about brand awareness and, and, and cheap clicks. The power of social media is in the fact that you can remarket to list. That is the key, right? And then for us, not only do we upload custom audiences, we upload our email list, we upload segments that we have and contact information we have, but then Facebook's really smart and they have relationships with like Experian and like MasterCard. So not only do I give them, here's, here's Veronica Romney, she's 30 years old, she has two children, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's my little avatar description. But then Facebook also knows like what my credit score is. They know that I own my own home because I have a home loan or a car loan. Right? It's kind of creepy, but it's true. So Facebook has this amazing ability to create a look-alike audience. So I can provide Facebook who I love. They give me more people. And I want to tell you that some of our best, best performing campaigns are actually our look-alike audiences. So again, for me, Veronica's philosophy about you know, Facebook advertising is that it's the remarketing, it's the list game. And if you haven't upped your game when it comes to your email list, this is my first assignment to you. So assignment number one is you need to up your lead magnet game. How do you do that? Well, I want you to go through your analytics and I want you to look at your top five pages of your website and on every single one of those top five pages, if there's not a lead magnet opportunity or a pop-up of some kind to capture an email address, that's your number one assignment I'm gonna give you. The other thing that I'm gonna do is like, hey, well, what, you know, what content should I have? Another tip that we have is we go through our most successful blogs or articles with a pre-established website. And if we can see that somebody has spent like four to five minutes reading a blog, that is prime picking for the next like 30 page white paper to learn even more, right? I've already assessed their mindset and how much they're in, like wanting to get from this blog. Why not give them more and then capture their email and then provide that to Facebook? It's just a no brainer. Number two, if you have done Facebook advertising before and it has frustrated you, it's probably because I would go into your account right now, your Facebook ad manager, and I would look at some of your targeting and it would be populated and full of interest targeting. Stop it. It's like really aggressive, sorry. Stop it, please. Um, I'm Cuban, it just comes out. Uh, but yeah, it's probably because you just like got really excited with all the little interest targeting and like, ooh, you know, this is fun. But the truth is Facebook isn't always amazing at when it comes to figuring out what I'm really interested in. In fact, if you go to your settings and click on ads, you can see what, how Facebook like categorizes you. This is fun. So Facebook thinks I'm really into carpets. That's good. I actually have tile in my house. It's Florida. Uh, they think that I love the police. I don't own one album. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what Canadians do, Sawi. Wait, how do you say it? Sawi, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah, you get it. We had this conversation last night at dinner. Uh, I'm really into German magazines. Nine, I'm not. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm really into the book of Genesis. I think that's discrimination. My last name is Romney, but like, I'm not really into the book of, I don't know. And then I have a thing for babe, oink, oink. Like, this is what Facebook is telling me that I'm interested in. So if I was a German magazine and I was doing a Facebook ad for anybody that classified as have showing an interest in German magazines, and then I go and I say, uh, ad not relevant, that's a, huge, that's a huge loss, right? Total disconnect. So what I want you to do, this is your second assignment, is I want you to do like kind of like a, a March Madness like bracket in your office. And I want you to start with demographics. So this is like the 35 to 45 you know, year old woman or the 13 to 15 year old kid that wants to, you know, which, who should see the ad for mobile gaming for their next party? Is it the kid who wants the cool gaming and needs to tell mommy? Or is it mommy who wants to do something really cool for her son? 
So do demographic targeting first. Once there's a, a statistically significant winner, then you're going to get to your second part of the bracket, which is you're going to take your winning demographic and you're going to add now behavior one versus behavior two. right? Because in Facebook, there is demographic targeting, interest targeting, and behavior. I want you to start with demographic, then I want you to go to behavior. Once there's a winner in those two areas, then we're going to get to the final area of the bracket, and then you're going to start testing interest one at a time. Because some will be garbage, and some will be jackpots. The key for you is to find them one at a time. Don't stick 20 interests in one thing. You'd be surprised. That's, that was a huge learning for us at our agency. Cool? OK, number three. I told you I have five. This is number three. I need you to upgrade your ad testing. Stop, stop, stop creating ads one at a time, not when Facebook now has their dynamic ad creation functionality in the software. We cut our, our design time at our agency literally in half because all we decided to do was utilize this new tool, and it's actually pretty fantastic, and we get to provide Facebook a number of creatives, and then they get to like basically play around with it. So we give them three images, three bodies, whatever. Like, right, we give them um, <clears throat> different elements of the ads, and then they mix and match until they find an answer that works the best. It really cuts down the time incredibly. So I'm going to give you the one that I would start with, your assignment. I want you to start with an image, a video, and a boomerang. No? OK. But the boomerang, actually, you'd be surprised. It just, slow, like, for whatever reason, I'm like scrolling through my mobile app, and like I see a boomerang, and I just have to, like, I stop. It's like a fly, like a, to the light. But I have to stop. I have to see what this boomerang is. So you might maybe tweet me if your boomerang outperforms the other two. That would make me really happy. Start with an image, a video, and a boomerang. In your body, I want you to do a differentiation between offer and urgency. Offer is like 20% off, $200 off, like be really specific. The urgency is ending tonight, three days left. I want you to use some of that language. That's worked really well for us. And the last element I want to make sure that you have is an element of social proof. The bra that transformed America. Like as much as we like to like think that we're early adopters, the truth is we're really not. <laughs> like I want to know that people have tried Boss Body or all the other, you know what I'm talking about, all those Facebook ads. I want to know that people like it. I want to see the elements of like testimonials and social proof or like user generated content. So make sure there's some social proof. And the result is this. You'll get five, at least for us, you'll get five times the clicks and 30% less the cost of acquisition. Game changer. Number four. I just, I, I'm, it's good. Anyways, number four. Personas, right, are like I said, 35 to 45. It's like that person. I'm going to tell you right now, that does not matter when you compare it to how they behave. I need you to stop focusing on the avatars and spending money on these agencies that like, sorry if that's one of you, but that they give you like four people that you need to talk to. Behavior trumps personas every single time. How someone acts is so much better than how they behave. Am I right, ladies? Yeah. Not bad, what the, you know? So again, how you behave versus how you look on paper is very different. So your assignment is I need you to think like Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a um, mail subscription where they mail to me the ingredients and I make it at my home. I've tried every single one of these meal kits. I should do a blog about it. And I, I ended up canceling Blue Apron. I didn't like it as much as some, one of the other ones. But Blue Apron, on their cancellation page, gave me an option to self-identify why I was canceling. Is it too time-consuming? Is it too messy? Is it too expensive? Well, I selected it was too expensive. So the first Facebook ad that I got from Blue Apron was, we've missed you. Bring the steakhouse to your house and get $10 off your next delivery. Does that make sense? So this is a win back ad, but they've made it because they say $10 off because I selected that it was too expensive. I wasn't getting the value for the price that they were charging me. So right? I think Ollie talked about this a lot too. Behavior should dictate your marketing. And when you do that, marketing is no longer marketing. It's just so natural to the end user. Last one, number five. Tie your emails to your social media ads. Why? Because 
If somebody sees a Facebook ad 24 hours after they opened your inbox, like opened your email in their inbox, they're 22% more likely to purchase from you or sign up for the webinar or whatever it is that you're soliciting or that you're trying to get in as far as a behavior. They're 22% more likely if you do the one-two punch between inbox and ad. So I need you to go back to your really pretty email sequences and your email marketing team, if you have one, or it's just you, and tie some of those best performing ads that you found in the previous assignments that I gave you and tie it all together. All right? So how are we doing so far? We like it? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I have a very long journey back to South Florida, but I wanted to leave you a little bit of some Facebook snacks for the road. These are things that at our agency that we are looking at very, very closely. So I want to advise you to do the same thing. Number one is going to be Facebook groups. Facebook groups is your new gated content community. The data that they're stripping post Cambria Analytics is still inside of your group data. Did everybody hear what I said? Data they're stripping in the advertising platform is still available in the group side. And Facebook is starting to monetize it. There are very successful groups inside of Facebook, and people are super engaged, like really engaged inside of Facebook, Facebook groups. And so now Facebook, to compete with the YouTubes and such, they're going to be testing. They already are. So they're picking, like I think, more like the mommy bloggers, the recipe groups, like the, some of those kind of more female-based groups. Um, but they're now that they're testing $4.99, I think, all the way to like $20 a month for you to have access to group content that's only exclusive to you, the paying member, as opposed to the free members. So I'm watching this very closely. The second thing that I want you to look at and consider as far as a snack for the road <clears throat> is Facebook ads should never behave by themselves in a silo. That's just not how social media advertising work. SEO plus social media is online marketing marital bliss. And where you can find this bliss is if you go into your Google Analytics under conversions, multi-channel funnels, assisted conversions, you're going to see the yellow brick road. You're going to see all those digital touch points, right, that somebody goes down until they finally convert. And more often than not, like more often than not, you're going to see that the last conversion might not be social media, maybe it is, but probably not the majority in comparison maybe to your organic or to your paid advertising. But when we run this test across 4,000 apartments, when I worked at Entrada, 70% of the time Facebook was the number one assisted conversion marketing thing, right? Like it was the number one. Which means that if you're running, if you're C-suite, is basing their marketing decisions off the last click attribution models where you give everything, all credit to the very last click before they convert, you're doing a massive disservice. So I just want you to go into your analytics and I want you to look at that and keep track and benchmark it where you are today when you start doing some of those social media techniques and where the assisted conversion techniques come in and how they help you. So as a summary, Social media's power lies in behaviorally based remarketing strategies. Like I talked about, you have to look at social media like a remarketing game, which means it's all about those lists, the ones to include, to exclude, to slice, to dice. If any of you use net promoter score, we've done this. We have a client called College Hunks Hauling Junks. They have a net promoter score. We took all of their promoters and stuck it inside of Facebook and then excluded all of their who, right, the demoters. And then we did a look-alike with all of their promoters. One of the best campaigns we've ever run, okay? I need you to tie all of your social media ads to all of your marketing efforts. We've talked about this in great deal. And lastly, I just don't, please don't be scared to try new things. It's not scary, you're in a safe place, you can call me. These are some of my biggest takeaways. So have you learned something new today? Thank you. Isn't 828 great? Well, the truth is I actually forgot why well, I purposely excluded one thing that happened on August 28th, and that was in 1987, this little girl was born. And she is fierce and totally nerdy. Did anybody see the Easter egg in the bathing suit? Anyone? The lettering cuts off at strategically, perfectly. 
Any, no, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, that little girl is me. Yeah, and today's my birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> and because I can't be with these little guys today because I'm having the time of my life with every single one of you, I need to go home with like one killer story and I think a room of like almost a thousand people singing happy birthday to me would be one hell of a story, yes? So would you do that for me? Three, two, one. Yeah, I cry. <laughs>